Too many T's. How are you guys? Nice to see you. Yo, hey Jarvis. Good to see yeah. you, man. Thanks yes, for joining me. Thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. I, I've been, you know, I've been following you guys for a while. I've been really impressed with, with you know, firstly your style and the way that you do things. But I'm really intrigued about this new single, This Earth. And obviously, you know, sustainability and climate action and the climate crisis is, is my kind of sector. So I wanted to talk to you about that. I mean, why, why have you done a song that's trying to, you know, talk about climate crisis? What, what, what's going on in your world to be doing that? <laughs> yeah well I, I think it was um just sort of seeing everything that's that's going on with the world you know and there's just uh like i've always been quite in in tune with sustainability and i studied it at university um so i've always i'm always reading things and keeping up to up to speed um and yeah it's obviously just the the climate madness you know there's there's just another report comes out every year about different sort of ecological systems collapsing or a new report on how many trees we need to plant to solve the problem because of the um or what the percentage of the in decrease of emissions is needed all these different things and i think i just read something about we've got 10 years i think it's quite a famous article actually we've got 10 years left things need to decrease by this much and um and we were writing an album, uh, La Famille, and we had this beat. The beat that's on this earth is, is Fout. Um, and it's like a real like, happy, old school, up-tempo beat. And, uh, and it just sort of, yeah, popped in my, my head. So I was thinking about uh, all, all the climate and just how, how bad the situation is. Um, and for this is perfect because you can communicate this problem on a really happy beat and it just sort of, it felt, it felt nice to do, you know? Yeah, nice. Well, it's nicely done. I mean, the video is great. I love, uh, I, hope, I hope none of those animals were, uh, were harmed in, in the video. I did, <laughs> notice, I, I did notice at the end you said they weren't, which is, which is great. But no, it, it, I think you're right. It is fun, um, the video. And it's, a, you know, it's a really serious subject. So, if we're going to touch people's hearts, you've got to, I guess, keep it light, but to the point. And I think you've done that really well. Um, I mean, we are pretty F-U-C-K'd actually, unless we, unless we turn things around. So appreciate it. And what, I mean, what are you hoping to achieve with it? I mean, you know, there's a lot of artists, if I'm really honest, that have jumped on the bandwagon when it comes to the climate crisis message over the years. And, you know, we've seen, yeah, you know, people like Coldplay and Annie Lennox and, you know, big, big, big household names that have tried to release albums with this kind of messaging and it just hasn't worked at all. But, you know, what, what, what's your heart telling you? Like, why, why, why are you using this messaging and what, what do you hope to achieve with it? I mean, initially it's, it is just to raise, to raise awareness, you know, within our fan base, within us, educating ourselves as well do it doing the research for for the song and sort of actually understanding how serious dangerous the the situation is that we're in you know if we can use our moderate platform to just raise some of these topics and engage people in a conversation i think that's what we're we're trying to do is sort of use our style and our voice to communicate these serious issues and like like Ross was saying, it's it, the like the last song that we've just that we've just released. It is it's performed in such a happy, upbeat manner, and the the serious nature of of the topic is actually that that our brand is to is to to kind of exude fun, yeah, you know, and yeah. light, and make people feel good. Yeah, and yeah. With, with this song, we're we're trying to make people do good with there's there's a call to action alongside alongside the track so we're trying to use that just to raise raise awareness and yeah inspire others basically to kind of educate themselves a bit as well i like that and what what's what's the response been so sorry sorry russ so just give me a sec what what what's the response been so far from your uh, you know from your fan base how has it been received I mean, well, <laughs> well, very well, but it's it's been it's been launched, you know, a, amongst a backdrop of a lot of other serious conversations. Yeah. So, um, I feel like 
maybe we have felt a, a little bit conscious of that as well. So maybe our, our actual feeling as to how successful it's been has been influenced by our own consciousness about what's going on globally at the moment. I, th um, I think, yeah, I think there's a lot of, a lot of issues at the minute and, and kind of, I think a lot of people feel kind of bombarded with problems and, um, and kind of reverting back to, it's, it's not just about climate, it's about all sorts of world issues, but it's mainly about kind of climate change and environmental destruction and kind of calling on that. And this time maybe, maybe wasn't the, the, uh, the best move for it to spread the, the song like we'd hoped you know like when it when it was written it was very it was it was last year when it was written and when we kind of wanted to release it as a as like a kind of a surprise like an impactful surprise you know and then whenever when everyone's kind of on this emotional burnout from this like collective trauma that we're all experiencing it's 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 not quite had the the response we wanted but at the same time it like it it's had a great people that have listened to it it's done well and um and like the the campaign the call to action that we've done alongside it is as is looking really good and it's kind of it's like the first step for us like yeah. it's the se second environmental song we've done but it's kind of like the first big step in like um us marking our intentions to to actually try and do some good through our music that's amazing. So you're committed to this. I mean, there's one thing for sure. It's not a subject that's going to go away. <laughs> exactly. Until, yeah. until we've dealt, you know, until we've dealt with it. And I think you're right. Science, you know, 98% of scientists are saying that, you know, if we don't radically uh, change things in the next nine years now, then, uh, you know, we, we, we're not going to do it. And that means potential extinction of many animals, lots of nature and potentially us as well. So yeah, it's a serious issue. There's no doubt about that. What yeah. one thing I've noticed, and I'd love most, to... probably. Uh, the biggest issue. It's the biggest the issue. Yeah. Well, it is. It is the biggest issue of of, of all time because it, you know. But one one thing I've noticed, certainly through the lockdown and through some of the things that you've talked about, because even even you know the pandemic, which has been serious, even Black Lives Matter, which has been super serious as well. You know, you you're right. People are being. Um, People are being much more kind of outspoken about things that uh, that are challenging them or that, that that you know they're not happy about. That's amazing. But one thing I've noticed through the lockdown is is that for the first time globally and collectively, we've been able to see um, a situation of cause and effect. So, for example, we've stopped travelling, we've stopped going to work, we've yeah. been buying in a different way, we've been consuming essential items only, and. The, the, the effect of that has been air pollution's dropped, you know, nature's begin to restore itself, the economy's collapsed, you know, and these are, in my opinion, very positive things because if our economy can't survive on non-essential, you know, on essential products only, cutting mm. out non-essential items, then clearly the yeah. economy's fucked anyway. So, Broke, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's a massive wake-up call. And I think what I love about what you guys are doing is you're tapping into a generation of, you know, people that have been born into awareness around the climate change, and now it's a climate yeah. crisis, also born into a system that we can see is completely dysfunctional because it doesn't yeah. serve the, the many, it serves the few. And so, you know, the consciousness that you've talked about is, is a really important thing. So, you know, hats off to you, if I could borrow one of your hats, Ross. In, in, in the <laughs> <laughs> take, take, take your pick. <laughs> I think, I think for me, having been a pioneer in sustainability for over 12 years, and that's all we've ever done is try to educate and inform and inspire people to change the way that they live for the better. We need more people like you and we need all of your fans out there to go and poke and prod their friends and family and try, try and get this snowball effect so that we yeah. can stay in the zone. So, yeah. you know, I wouldn't be too gutted about the timing because actually everything has its moment and it, you know, it, it just needs to reach that one person that's, that's yeah. then keep, keep the energy flowing. Yeah. I, I, I think what's really important is like that um, we've sort of realized like we first want to kind of activate ourselves properly and fully. And, yeah. and I think this is something that I've really noticed and kind of ties into as seeing all the systems around us kind of collapsing a bit and, and like people in power, like kind of holding on by a thread is that is that like 
in the past, even though I've been in the sustainability industry for like 10 years, I've like, uh, I've always thought it's kind of the government's responsibility to deal with the climate crisis. We need to change like the source of energy and, and potentially the economic system we use in yeah. order to, to get the change. But what, what I've just really realized in the last couple of, well, two or three years, since it's just evident how misleading and dishonest the people are, I mean, they always have been, but now it's just blade so blatant it's just not even hidden anymore you know yeah. and, it, and it's like we all need to actually do our own bit and sort out our own little turf of earth that we've got yeah. each yeah. and then and then and then and then and then everyone else does and then it and it will snowball and i think it's been a success in the way that i think we've realized that ourselves and yeah. then and and yeah. and, and, there's, and there's and there's a bunch of people that have got involved with uh with our call to action which is a tree planting scheme yeah. Yeah. The pe people in people in the pa in power obviously just love power and money. They don't care about the planet. You've got Trump pulling out of the Paris Agreement. You know he's a climate change denier, and these are the people who we previously have looked at to kind of lead us. So I think it's it is down to it's down to us. It's down to the people to start making making those changes and hopefully we can sort of spread that word and raise that awareness and let the ripples roll yeah I mean, what was amazing about trump pulling out the climate crisis or the power sorry the paris agreement rather was was that it had the biggest advert ever so actually you know in, in adversity you get the most amazing opportunity so you know that that was the biggest um the biggest billboard that could have ever happened him pulling out of so you know, I'm I'm a big a big believer in it. Everything happens for a reason, and even this opportunity that we've got now is is to, you know, we either fix the issue, restore our and regenerate our planet, or or we don't. I mean, that's the opportunity, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as yeah. as human beings, we either come together and put down our weapons and our tools and our, the way we currently function in in a in a non service non serving system, and roll up our sleeves, and everything that we're good at. We um, we apply that skill to mitigating the climate crisis. That's like that's the ultimate scenario, isn't it? Yeah. And what you guys are doing is you're creating an awareness to say each individual can take responsibility for their own ecosystem. And we know, like at my Green Pod, which is all we've ever done, is kind of recommend products and services and organisations that people can change from A to B and do yeah. for the planet. We know there are six things that people are willing to change in their lives. You mentioned energy, so you can switch to 100% renewable energy. Yeah. Buy from companies and organizations that are planting trees in the transaction. So we do that at My Green Pod. I, I don't want this to be an advert for us, but I just want to you know, inform your, your viewers and our viewers about the things that they can do. So they shop more consciously. Make sure they're buying products that are not harming the planet or themselves You know, from companies that as you say, Leon, don't give a shit about anything else but the bottom line. And mm. then, you know, what people eat, that's a good one. I mean, you know, we're all vegan in our house, but, you know, not everybody's going to be a plant-based, you know, eater. But if you can kind of cut out a bit of meat once a week or twice a week and, you know, yeah. eat, eat differently, that's a very easy win. Buy organic, that's a massive one. Because, you know, would you believe in the UK, only 4% of all sales in food are organic? It's tiny, tiny, yeah. It's really, really small. So we need to kind of, you know, we really need to try and support that organic farming process because the topsoils, we, well, they reckon we've got max hundred years left of a hundred harvests left in our topsoils. Yeah. So and you know, and that's another thing that people could do. And then I think the really cool ones are, is travel. Like if we can work from home, even work from home two days a week, the impact that that has on <laughs> on on. Yeah. on carbon emissions is huge and also the way people go on holiday like you know can we think about traveling on holiday in a different way getting a train or cycling or you know even walking or you know or if you are going to go somewhere you know you, you you do it consciously and take longer to get somewhere so that's part of the travel experience as well yeah. Yeah. The, they're all things that we have control over <clears throat> i yeah. mean the thing, about, the thing about the governments is they only care about getting voted in don't they they only care about you know get, getting voted in in the next election so yeah exactly and say what they want they're not <laughs> they need to get in
they're not thinking long term. But I tell you what I'd love to know, like what from you guys is, what are you doing in your lives that you feel is sustainable or ethical good practice? Mm -hmm. And we'll start, we'll start with you, Leon. You know, what, what are the top three things that you think you are doing that are having a positive impact? Um, well, I just wanted to go back to that travel thing that you were just talking about, you know, because that was like, the travel is like a big, a big thing that made us think, of, like we're doing this project at the moment, plant, planting trees, and it was the travel that came about like, in, our, in our job. We travel a lot on on flights and we were looking off offsetting the carbon which is why we started this tree planting thing and i think just ra raising being aware of that has been one of the biggest changes in in my life just just the awareness of it of what you can do i mean i do i sort of drastically reduced meat consumption don't eat beef um don't have single use plastic switch to renewable energy on my uh, at home um that's, that's three that's, good. that's three that's brilliant <laughs> three, three clear calls to action you switch to 100 percent renewable energy there are loads of good companies out there i mean octopus energy is the company that we recommend because mm. it's brilliant mm. which you know which uh recommended um recommended uh organization so and then the food thing is massive so, I mean, you know, I mean, if, if America get their way with, with, with trading with us, then yeah. I'd stop eating meat altogether if I were you. <laughs> make yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Make sure it's British, well <laughs> British and organic, or else don't go near it, because you might as well just stick a load of bleach, just drink a bottle of bleach. <laughs> yeah, formaldehyde, formaldehyde for breakfast. Formaldehyde, exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, and 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 Russ, what about the let's let's say the top three things that you you're doing in your world that is, you know, an inspiration and, and mitigating climate change. Um, so I've always uh, so yeah, sort of as well as the band, I, I run a like a consultancy that um, we do um, help build low carbon buildings. Uh, we're a consultancy, and our clients are architects and developers. So we put together energy strategies. So I spend a lot of my time like convincing rich people to reduce the carbon emissions of design way over what they need to be um so that's that's kind of a big a, a, a big thing that i kind of take take some pride in is like how much can i how much can i convince these guys to do this you know and try and make it work financially for them as well yeah um so that's a really big thing but yeah but it's, i've run that company for eight years since we started too many teas so i left my job and started it and and through the company i kind of wanted to make it carbon neutral so i've always offset all my flights through my company since since it started uh, which has started getting really expensive with all the travel that we do with uh, too many teas. But um, but yeah, offsetting, and then and then I switched to to bulb a couple of years ago when that started up. Um, and I've been veggie for like four years. I've not made the 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 jump to to veganism. I switched my milk though. That's a really big thing. It is because I was because I eat a lot of cereal as well. I love cereal. And uh, and I was and drinking really? old, en endless tea as well. So like I was I was I was sort of buying organic milk and and uh, that and I thought and I just didn't like um, soya milk. I thought it was horrible. And someone had told me that story that like soya is terrible as well. It, and that, and that was enough. <laughs> that was enough for me, you know. Like, but um, but but last year I switched to like oat milk and uh, there's like a this real creamy one and it was like. <laughs> And it, like, and it, <laughs> yeah, and uh, only is it the only barista one? Is that exactly, one? Yeah, exactly? That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's one. So, so, so as soon as I realised that my tea tasted good with that in, I was like, oh, wicked! And then, and then I've been like a real. I've like convinced quite a few people to switch to to oat milk, and then, and it's weird how like when you switch to something like that, you start getting a real different perspective on when people are drinking milk. Like I was back at home, and my parents were drinking like lo loads and loads of normal milk, and and you start. When you're removed from it, you let yourself start thinking about what happens to yeah. the animals and how it's produced and, and the sort of like forced impregnation and the fact that there's like pus in the milk and all this stuff. You know? yeah. <laughs> like it, it's disgusting, but, but, but you never ever even let yourself have a second to think about that when you're, when you're in it and you're doing it. And, we, and everyone's been guilty of this. It's like, you know, mm. it's how we've been brought up and the yeah. society we've been conditioned yeah. into. So it's sort of like, just I don't know. That was like a real big, big one for me, where I was like, "Ah, right, I can just change yeah. this." And yeah. and I'm and I'm currently doing the same thing, and I'm aware of it. I'm I'm ignoring 
I, I eat like some fish and I'm just kind of ignoring that at the minute. And until I make that conscious decision to bring down that, down that wall as well, then yeah, it's sort of like, yeah, it goes back to the awareness and it? education thing and, and sort yeah. of learning, understanding and the, and realizing that there are other options. Yeah. I think yeah. it's that you do really well, Jarvis, is provide those clear options. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think you're right because there's a lot of myth busting out there. It's like I mean, I'll just pick up on a couple of things you've said just for awareness. So you know, you mentioned about soy that soy is damaging the rainforest, and it's not human consumption of soy. Most yeah. soy is planted to to actually feed animals for agriculture. Yeah, so, yeah. So that's that's the so, so if you're part of the eating meat chain, the soy is an issue. If you're yeah. drinking soy milk, I, I promise you, it's not an issue. Yeah. Yeah. So I read that as well. You know, so, like, so that's so number one. The other, the other thing is, is the milk is, is, you know, lots of people love milk. We've been conditioned with it. We were given it at school for free. I mean, when I went to school, uh, that's how old yeah. I am. It makes well. you strong. It makes you strong, doesn't it? Yeah, you know? it like, comes up, yeah. But, but the point is, is that actually, if you can drink organic milk, if you like milk and you drink organic milk, that's all right, because actually it's, it's processed in a way that is, that is it, you know, it's not too bad for you. It's mm -hmm. the highly processed milk that is really, really uh awful because obviously you know it's coming from animals that you know are not eating organic food they're you know they're given you know chemicals and steroids and all kinds of things in order to produce that milk that's yeah. bad so i think i think to be clear what we're looking at really is is factory farming that is non-organic yeah. is very 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 bad is is, yeah. is destructive um you know what i'd like to ask you about clothes because clearly you know you both you both like your clothes i notice you've got a too many. Uh, so you've got a THTC uh, trees are good T-shirt on, uh, yeah, which is amazing. So big up Gab at THTC. But yeah. what do you, what what do you guys think about fashion? And you know, you're in an industry that is highly, um, you know, it's highly uh, important to have an image, to be mm -hmm. fashion conscious. Mm -hmm. And actually, fashion is probably the third most destructive industry on the planet. And actually, it doesn't even have any relevance. It's not important to anything other than <laughs> looking good. Like at least energy, you can okay. understand energy is driving stuff. You know, mm. you know, it does it does keep us hot or keeps refrigerations cool, yeah. and it gets yeah. people from A to B. But what the fuck does fashion do? It doesn't do. It does. It has no purpose. So just talk to me about fashion, guys. Where where your head's at? <laughs> talk to me. I mean, it's difficult because you know we are. It is a sort of we are a a band and there is there is an image to the to to the band um but going back to you know what what do i do i do shop a lot in charity shops and sort of Good reuse and, and recycle and you know we get we we get given a lot of clothes and we work closely with people like thtc who are you know incredible incredible company um using organic cotton and, and hemp for a lot of their a lot of their clothes and donate money to good causes and um again just be just being aware i think it was at school you know when you'd like you'd wear gap clothes and then and then, you know and you were sort of late teens i started to read stories about what gap were doing which sort of opened your eyes to like these big companies and again just that just educating yourself allows you to have an option to change yeah and but it's you know it's not it's not easy because there's a lot of cheap fashion out there yeah. that well people buy it because it's cheap you know and I've yeah. definitely done that. I, I think I think it's I, I never realised about fashion as well, Jarvis. I never like, really got. I, I I did always used to like sort of buying clothes and like looking looking cool and you know like and like with, with music there's like a you know there's like the the sound and and the style and it's like it becomes part of the the package of the art form and like how how you look kind of can have like a subliminal effect on how you sound to people you know what i mean there's like yeah. there's, it's it's kind of wrapped up in it and uh, and and like too many tees comes from what well, i used to collect t-shirts i used to buy like three t-shirts a week you know what i mean i had like hundreds of t-shirts at one point and um and then, and then I sort of stopped by. I just lost interest in like that fashion at some point in my early twenties or mid twenties, just after we started the band, really. And like I just sort of stopped buying as many clothes. I don't know. If it was good. I just when we started the band, and I just didn't have as much money or not. I think it's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, there's a link there. <laughs> oh god, yeah, I just oh, left my really good job. 
started getting free clothes then as well because people and then, wear their stuff. <laughs> and then we started getting free clothes, but but I definitely felt that like that pull away from fashion and being bothered about it. And then and then and then we we went to we went to Cannes to the advertising festival like a couple of years ago, and we and we got a stylist, yeah, and 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 this stylist dresses up in some like real fresh clothes, and that was the first time I was like, all oh, right, I get fashion like this makes you feel fucking great for some yeah. reason you know and like and it's amazing how she put it together it's like a sort of art form within itself yeah but um so like i i, I sort of don't want to knock fashion too much but like it, it it's like anything it needs to be sustainable and it needs to be like in moderation you know what i mean so now i'll really treat it especially if i buy like i bought this jumper you know like and i and, and i won't buy another loud jumper like this for a couple of years and this will yeah. be my one loud jumper you know yeah. Yeah. And like, and and I think it's like it's the same with meat, you know, like the flexitarianism. Like, I don't think eating meat's particularly that bad if it's farm, right? And we've got like a huge long past history of, you know, like um, living with animals and and using all their products, and it can be done in such a sustainable way. But it's all about moderation, isn't it? You know, it's yeah. it's not that this mass this mass output. Yeah. Everyone yeah. could just have a little bit. Everyone could have a little bit. Yeah. Everyone can't have everything. I think you're brilliant. it's brilliant that you've said that because you're absolutely right. It's not it's not the issue actually with people buying stuff. It's that it's buying stuff once. It's a bit like single use plastic, single use dresses, single use club clothes, whatever it yeah. might be. And that that's the point. If you uh, there is a there is a little mantra that people should have now. If you're not going to wear it thirty times, don't buy it. Hmm. If it's something that you know you're going to get thirty wears out of, buy it. If it if it's from a you know an ethical brand, even better. But, uh, you know, yeah. if you can get the use out there. I mean, the, the problem is it's such an intensive uh, usage on energy resources, water, um, tox, yeah. toxin chemicals going into water, you know, cotton. I mean, all of that, all of this stuff. But, you know, th there's, I think 70% of people that are involved in making fashion are, are treated as slaves and, and are women. I mean, yeah, it's massive, massively mm -hmm. detrimental statistics. So, but listen, guys, that's been, I mean, it's been amazing talking to you. I think um, we'll wrap up there because I think it's been really good to get your insight, to find out why you're doing what you're doing. You truly believe in it. Your heart's there. And I'm, I'm just really pleased to have, have spoken to you both. So anything you want to say, just end on any, any last words? Um, Make it quick because we've got, we've got two well, minutes. Th thanks, 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 for, thanks for the interview, mate. Um, it's, been, it's been lovely to, to chat to you. I mean, we sort of just with with the song that we've released, we don't want to just give people bad news. So alongside it, we've, we're launching a, a call to action where we're encouraging people to come and join us and actually plant some trees. So we've, we're setting up this, we've set up this company called Too Many Trees and Wee. we're asking people to, to donate and not only just donate, but actually come with us and plant the trees. So we've, we're creating this brilliant day. We've partnered with um, Gone West, which is this Prince's Trust affiliated. Yeah. A company who are going to make sure that the, the trees are maintained and protected um and that's that's happening soon we've raised nearly two thousand pounds oh well done which is, which is amazing so it's happening so we're looking for more people just to just to get involved and come and be part of the journey with us that's amazing and just for everybody that's listening so the, the trees are important because they sequester the carbon they keep the temperatures down they keep the weather yeah. patterns functioning to the best of our ability without us tipping over the edge so Trees are super, super important. So too many trees. How do people um how do people get to your to find out that? Is there a website or uh no, it's currently just um like a an Indiegogo page. It finishes in a week actually. Um uh, on the end of the end of July is when the the fundraiser finishes. But out of this fundraiser we're hoping to like set up some more planting days. So this first one we're gonna be planting a thousand trees, but we're kinda of committed to plant ten thousand. And then, so there'll be more planting days next year, but we kind of want to, we want it to like snowball a bit and get some satellite planters starting their own schemes that are fans that are like in different countries or, yeah. or around the UK. So we're going to just sort of slowly, slowly build it up and we'll, we'll end up with like a website and stuff for too many trees. But, but at the minute, just follow us on our socials on Facebook or Instagram and you'll, and you'll hear about it. Too many T's. Follow too many T's. Yeah. It's yeah, simple. man. Cool. Well, I'd love to invite you up to Broughton Hall Estate where we're living. We've got a, a rewilding project going on. It's actually going to be 15% of the government's targets are going to be rewilded and planted here. 700,000 wow. trees. 
So wow. if we can if we can get you guys up to do a, a gig, we can get some of your fans up and they can come and help us get some of the trees in the ground. How cool would that be? That would um, be amazing, mate. There's, there's, the, there's the second one, the second planting day sorted. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. you yeah. heard it here first. We'll <laughs> like follow up on that together. We'll make it happen. Cheers, guys. Legend. Great to talk to you. Legend. Legend. You're, a le you're a legend, Jarvis. Thanks uh, for uh, all your advice, mate. It's, uh, it's really clear and... And uh, yeah, really good to meet you, man. It takes one to know one, mate. So you're just you're just seeing a reflection of yourself. Oh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Much love. Much love, Take, man. Take care, mate.